Hello and welcome to section two of our gold rush unit. Today we're going to be looking at the discovery of gold and Sutter's Mill. We're going to talk about how this event started and how this domino effect of one man's project turned into a worldwide phenomenon. Here are the notes. Go ahead and copy down the uh, objects for the notes and when you come to a place where you feel like something should go in the note section, fill it in. If you miss one, no problem. Bring your notes to class and we'll talk about it. If you, if you miss all of them, rewatch the presentation. Go ahead and pause it and when you're finished copying this down into your comp notes, continue on. First question, where did this gold rush begin? Now, when most people think of the gold rush, they think of San Francisco. Why? Maybe because of the 49ers. Maybe because that's where a lot of marketing and the city growth and those kind of things happened. But really, gold wasn't found in the streets of San Francisco. Gold was found in the foothills of the Sierra Nevada mountains. It was actually found in a little place called Coloma and that is located on the American River and it's kind of to the northeast of Sacramento today at present day Sacramento at the time it wasn't called Sacramento uh, Sacramento was at the time known more as Sutter's Fort because John Sutter the immigrant we learned about uh, created that um, kind of fort or place where immigrants would come in to find work to have a fresh start. And one person who did just that, came to have a fresh start, um, came to Mr. Sutter and asked him for a project, and we'll get into that in a second, but that's kind of how it all started. And the Coloma River, uh, or the American River, is located again next to Coloma. And if you look on this little map here, you can see it. And this picture on the left is uh, an actual picture of the American River where gold was first found. So before, if you didn't really have a picture in your head of what it looked like where gold was found, now you do. So, I told you about this guy who came to uh, Mr. Sutter and said, hey Mr. Sutter, um, I'm looking for a, an opportunity. What can you do for me? My name is Mr. James Marshall. Um, James Marshall was an American citizen who actually migrated west from Missouri to Oregon um, hoping to cure malaria back in 1845. Um, we're starting his story there with his malaria because um, a lot of people felt the more in nature you were, the better chance you have of curing some diseases. Back then people weren't, they didn't know as much about science as we do today. And so people would kind of uh, either use home remedies or do things like this. So he headed up to Oregon actually first, but then uh, decided to come down into um, Sacramento and heard about the Sutter thing, so he wanted to check it out and to get to cure that old malaria. Well, well the news broke of the Mexican-American War happening um, in 1847. He actually joined with John Fremont, and he was actually part of that Bear Flag Revolt, you know, the Osos, who... Um, kind of overthrew the Mexican government at the time, and he was one of those guys who, who you know, hoisted the flag, and hooray, California is an independent country that we learned about uh, last time. But the only problem with that, though, is he had a little goat farm um, near Sacramento, and when he went off to go on this revolt, he came back, and everyone stole all of his, his cattle, his livestock, and so he didn't have a way to make money. So he went and saw uh, John Sutter and said, Hey, Mr. Sutter, uh, my livestock got stolen, but I'm a pretty skilled carpenter, so I think I can help you out. And John Sutter said, You know what? I have this property uh, about 40 miles upstream uh, to the northeast, uh, a little place called Paloma. I would like you to make a lumber mill there, or a sawmill, and... You're going to be uh, the foreman of this project. You're going to be in charge, and I'm going to give you some, some guys, some Native Americans, to 
come and help you work. And I want you to just to build a sawmill there. And the deal is, uh, you make this sawmill, you do the work, cut the wood, all that kind of stuff, you know, take care of the lumber, and we'll gi I'll give you a percentage of the lumber as your pay. And he said, oh, that seems fair enough. Okay, sounds great. I'll go up to uh, Coloma, and I'll build this sawmill on the uh, American River. The reason they needed to use the American River or to build it next to a river is because they used the water as a source of energy. So he went up there. He went to go build a sawmill uh, along the American River in Coloma. And it ran into some problems. Um, the first problem was that um, the sawmill was getting, there was a problem with the water depth and using the, the river to help uh, with the sawmill's production line. So he actually started to, he'd, come, he'd wait till kind of like the night when people weren't using the mill, and he'd try to manipulate the river into, uh, like, getting the getting it deeper to create space. And so he's every morning he would go there and, and see the depth or the the changes that the alterations he made in the river upstream, uh, how it would affect his sawmill. And he kept the journal. And on one day, on January twenty fourth, eighteen forty eight. Um, in the morning, he, he went to go check to see, you know, what, what happened with the river, and he actually found some just kind of strange rocks. And luckily, he was a pretty good mineralist, or he had an idea of what certain elements of minerals were. And so he started testing, and he's like, oh, I know this, this, this mineral here is a little strange. It looks out of place, and I know it could be either one of two things. And so he started testing it out, um, doing common practices of the time, and he actually concluded through uh, his hypothesis that these minerals were actually gold. And so he's like, I can't believe it. There's gold here. I just found some pieces of gold. And gold at the time is basically money. So it's like you finding, you know, you go put it in perspective. It's like you going out, your mom telling you to go outside to plant some corn and you go outside to plant some corn in your backyard and you start digging up the the ground and all of a sudden you see you know wads of hundred dollar bills on the ground you're like oh my gosh there's money here so being a good guy he says you know what i'm going to take this gold i found and i'm going to go talk to uh john sutter i mean he gave me this opportunity he's my boss and i think he'd be really interested and we can talk further about this gold because it could be something big here well, when he went there, Mr. Sutter said, hey, this gold that you have found is excellent. It's very, very high quality. I can't believe it. We've got tons of gold. Great. The only problem with uh, Mr. Marshall was that the gold didn't really help him. You'd think him being the first one to find gold would help him, but it actually didn't. The reason is all the people who he was, wor who was working in a sawmill took off because why work for someone and make you know, I'll say a dollar a day, when you can just go mine some gold, find some gold nuggets in the river, and you can make $10 a day or $100 a day or $1,000 a day. It didn't make sense for them. So his sawmill project really didn't really work out for him in that, in that sense. So that wasn't good. And if we go further into Marshall's life, there were times when he tried to pan for gold. He wasn't successful. Uh, he tried other things. But ultimately, he ended up just dying a bitter, poor man. And he he tried he tried to find gold. He he tried to get the sawmill thing going. People stole his his goats or whatnot. But we remember him because of you know him being the first one to actually find it, record it, and uh, kind of sp spread that first word. But if James Marshall wasn't the one who got rich. Who did? Eventually, there were miners who were successful finding gold, especially in 1848. Now, these miners, how do they find out about it? Because if I know about something and I only tell one other person, me and that other person are going to be the only ones who know. But sort of the way he was, he was a pretty nice guy. And he said, you know what? I'm going to tell people about 
this bold, but we're going to keep it in-house. We're only going to tell a few of us that are here, you know, working on my fort or working in Coloma, only a small number of people are going to know about it. So at first in January, not really many people knew about it. And those people who, who first went up there and started doing it kind of on a, a year-long basis, they were successful because there was so much just kind of very, very at the surface. But ultimately, the most successful people uh, during the gold rush weren't the miners themselves because more and more people came. It became very overcrowded, and they didn't really make that much money. Most of the time, they were just trying to stay alive. The people who made the most money were merchants or people who had stores and sold things or just entrepreneurs. An entrepreneur is someone who has an idea, and they try to sell that idea. For example, they could uh, have an idea. You know what I think people would like in the gold rush? They'd like potatoes. So I'm going to bring a bunch of potatoes to the gold rush, and I'm going to try to sell potatoes. Or I think people would really like a laundry service. So I'm going to create this laundry business, and hopefully people will give me their clothes to wash, and I can make money that way. So an entrepreneur is, a, is business people. Business people are the most successful during the gold rush because they were serving all the miners who were out there trying to strike it rich. One of these most ingenious uh, entrepreneurs was a man named Sam Brandon. So a little about Sam. Uh, <clears throat> oh, kind of told you what happened. Uh, so Sam Brandon was a Mormon uh, man who led about 240 followers into San Francisco and into California to find a better place of a better life or a better place of worship for the people of his church. And he opened up a little uh, general store right outside of Sutter's Fort, and it was completely random. There was no... He just got lucky. Like many people in this in the Gold Rush, he just got lucky. And basically, um, he had a great idea. He heard through gossip. Gossip is when someone kind of whispers, and, oh, I heard this this rumor that there's gold in the uh, foothills of the Sierra Nevada close to his store. He said, you know what would be great? It would be so great if lots of these miners came. So Sam decided to get some gold, and he brought it to San Francisco. And this is on May 12, 1848. He walks into San Francisco, and people were kind of hearing these rumors about this gold, and he makes a big spectacle about how there's gold everywhere in these mines and everyone can be rich, so come get some gold. But why would but why would Sam do that? Why would he want miners to come mine all the gold when he could get the gold himself, right? Who would do that? Well, he was smarter than the miners in this sense because he knew these miners would need supplies. He knew they would need picks and shovels and pans and food and clothing, etc., so what he did was, right, before, right when he did this, he bought up all the pans he could find in San Francisco. He'd buy them for like 30 cents, and then he'd go to a store and sell them for like $15 a piece. And he was making so much money. Really, really smart guy. Another thing that uh, really helped him was that he actually created his own newspaper after he started getting you know, some, some success. It was called the California Star. And he started just printing hey, come to California. There's tons of gold everywhere. Come to the general store that I created. And so he would advertise in his own newspaper that he owned, and he would talk about how successful everyone was getting gold. And then he copied about 2,000 of these things and just sent them kind of to the east coast of uh, the United States. So ultimately word spread because the newspaper paper articles because he was telling everyone he came and crossed with and the biggest reason was because uh people were successful they would go up to the gold mine it's 1848 there's gold everywhere and they would find tons of gold well one one group brought about seventeen thousand dollars worth of gold back to the to the east coast back to washington dc and actually showed the president and every year, the president has this thing called the State of the Union. And he decided to tell everyone in the world, hey, guess what? California has got lots of gold. 
So in January, the first gold was found by um, by Marshall. By March, it was published in the first local California newspaper, but people were still a little skeptical. Then in May, uh, we had Brand uh, Brandon come in and just totally announce it. He showed examples of it. He was holding gold. Check it out, everyone. And about 800 people who lived in San Francisco took off and went to the fields. He bought all their supplies, sold it to them, made tons of money, made like $36,000 in a month. And some of these people brought the gold back to the East Coast, East Coast, told the president. The president said in this official speech that everyone kind of follows that there's large qualities of gold. And when, what happened with that is um, it allowed people to believe in it. Wow, President Polk says it. It's got to be true. And that was pretty much it. That's how the gold rush start, started, how people started to hear about it, and how eventually uh, it came to the president and it convinced everyone that, yes, there was gold in California and there was a lot of gold to be made.